he was like black women this and that oh yeah yeah men attracted to thugs and shit and um i um i um i started to think like um the reason why thugs have so much respect is the origins of what how they began you know like uh they started off as the community protectors and um you know basically police you know uh against police brutality that's why they kind of have that respect on them and uh i was just thinking like maybe they a way to combat like the crime in our community is if they got back on a job what their original purpose was and that's really all i wanted to say for real all right but thank you so much all right we don't have we don't have dudes like that you know a lot of these dudes ain't really thugs you got a lot of a lot of moist niggas just running around here you know it ain't ain't really thugs you ain't really got no no real hustlers like that like that it's people get these we we gotta i gotta start getting these terms right you know when i did my first book the art of mac and that cleared up a lot of terminology because people would just kind of throw everybody in the same boat and the terminology would be all over the place so all street people ain't created equal, all right? Just because somebody is engaging in some street activities, that don't mean that they're a real hustler. You understand? So we got to really get these terms together because um, a lot of dudes who are real hustlers, that's what women like. Women like a dude who knows how to get it. And he can be a hustler on the streets or he can be a hustler in the, the legitimate world. But oftentimes, you know, you, you got some dudes who street cats who might be out here hustling and women like a dude who can just get the hell up and get it. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes women just like a nigga who just knows how to get out here and get it. Like, hey, look, I got to go. I got to go pick up some real quick. I'll be back about four or five hours, but I'm, I got to go pick up some. And the women can respect a nigga who can just go out and get it. You understand? The legitimate way or the street way. Because, you know, the other alternative is getting a nigga who's like a beta male and a dude who ain't really got no drive, a dude who ain't got no ambition, a dude who be on Twitter whining about other niggas all day. You, you dig? Little informants. You know, women don't want no dude like that. Women don't want these little sassy dudes. You know, little sassy mama boy baby beta males. Women don't want that. You know, cause listen to some of the, the tethers who'll be calling. I mean, they, they ain't got tethers out here. And they ain't got no game. They're not witty. They don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. Women don't want that. A lot of street dudes, a lot of hustlers, they're, they're, many of them are very personable because they got to have somewhat of a level of charisma and charm. So women are attracted to that. So we got to understand the whole thug thing because people just kind of throw the thug thing out there. There's a difference between a street dude and a thug. You know, I was a street dude. I used to be a street dude way back in the day. That's why they all y'all tethers be calling up, putting all these weird crimes on my ass. According to the tethers, I was the most gangster nigga ever. I didn't kill a million niggas, pimped a gazillion holes, sold all types of bricks. And according to tethers. I was uh, damn James St. Patrick. Shit, according to them, I was the most gangster nigga ever. But uh, I've never been under the thug blanket. You know, there's always there's a there's a there's a like a sleazy opulence with the whole thug thing. There's something sleazy about that. I ain't never been that. I ain't never been no slimy, sleazy nigga. There's something sleazy about the whole thug narrative. Women like hustlers. I don't think women so much like a, quote, thug, but they, they like a hustler. You think? All right, let me get some more folks in here, because we are in here. How many people we got in here? And by the way, um, don't forget to get the movie Microphone Check at microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. Microphonecheck.com. The hottest documentary on hip hop in the game out right now. 
Let's get um, Danny Dan. It's Dan Bazarian's troll fake. It's a fake Dan account. We'll see. Okay, the Dan. What's going? What's Dan's last name? Is it Bazarian? What's his? Last yeah, name? yeah, it's that one, man. What ha What happened to him? Because me and him, we we got into it one time. What happened to his little old short ass? I don't know. Maybe he got shot. Maybe he didn't. No, he didn't get shot. But. Yeah. I'm just playing. I'm just yeah. playing. Okay, where's your accent? You got a weird ass accent, nigga. Where's your accent from? Where guess where I'm from, man. And then I'll tell you. Oh, hold on. let me let me try to guess. Um Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me say wait, let me let me have you keep talking. Um Sure. Um uh, now what's your name? My name is Raz. Raz, okay. Where the fuck is your accent from? I'm really good with accents. But you got to guess now. Now I'm, now I'm going to make you wait. Then I'll tell you at the end, but you got to guess now. Oh, cause I do want to guess. I want to, cause I'm real, I'm good with accents, but nigga, your shit is on something else. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I ain't going to tell you right away now. You got to wait for it now. Hold on. It's kind of nasally. Is it? Uh, hold on. Where the fuck is you from? Yeah. Uh, like like Norway, are you Norwegian or some shit? Nah, I feel way far off, man. Or so, or wait, wait, is like a Filipino type of thing? Absolutely not. You're way off. You're on the wrong continent. Okay, okay. So very nice. So um, Argentina. Nope, you're on the wrong continent, man. I'm gonna make you wait now. Oh Lord, it's only few. <laughs> now I'm gonna make you wait. <laughs> you started it, man. Not with that accent. Damn, family, where's this nigga's accent from? Um, yeah, it, it can't be. I, I didn't name about three continents. It, you ain't from Antarctica, so you. Uh, there you go. Uh, now, now, where you from? Well, you gotta take two more guesses now, and then I'll tell you. Okay, I didn't. I didn't took enough. Shit, that's enough. And it's not Africa. That's not no. I'm absolutely Africa. not African. Right, right. Um, so. Uh, is it Italy? Somewhere in Italy. You're getting closer. Okay. It's not. Uh, it's not France. I'm from North America, man. I'll give you that continent. Now you guess which country I'm from. In North America, oh, Canada. Yeah, Canada. That's it. I'm from Canada. Okay, but by way of something else, though. See, that's the thing. That accent, the Canadian accent. <laughs> It, it it accents another accent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so where did your family move to Canada from? Well, you guessed the first one. It's uh, closer to Italy. It's Greek. Greek. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Okay. And I've been, yeah. to, I've been to Greece. Love yeah, Greece. I've never been there, though. But I know where you're from. You're from the Caribbean somewhere, initially. No, I'm not. Sound kind of Caribbean-ish. Well, the hell I do. I found there's nothing Caribbean about me, and no disrespect to the Caribbean. No and you're from then you're from the states, but somewhere from Brooklyn, maybe. No, 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 man. I'm from Detroit and Alabama and L.A. Okay, so oh, yeah. that's why you're talking. You're from the streets, man. Detroit. Yeah. I'm a full. I've been full foundational Black American. My family built this country from scratch. Um, so how come you haven't been back to um, Greece? How come you haven't been to... to I just never been there. I was born in uh, Canada. There you go. Um, what's going on up there in Canada? What y'all got going on up there? Well, it's pretty boring. Uh, it's the election year, but uh, it's Canada, man. It's boring. It's nothing really going on up here. It's uh, It's all the states. Right, right. All right, man. But thank you so much. All right. Yeah, well, his, his accent was a beast. Bro. All right, y'all raise your hand. Let's raise your hand if y'all want to get in here because we are in the building heavy. We're in the building heavy. Let's get Kevin in here. Kevin Bando Kev. Let's get Bando Kev. He's promoting his mixtape. What's up, Bando Kev? Hey, Kev, turn your microphone on, bro. Tariq, man, what's up? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. What's on your mind, Kev? 
Yeah, man, you know, it, it, it kind of made me sick to my stomach to see what happened uh, to the survivors, those last two, with the uh, their case being dismissed. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's terrible. But I do want to give a shout out to my home state, California. <clears throat> I did hear about the initiative they're trying to get was like a, the number is 800 million. Yeah, um, I think for, it's billion, billion, I think. Billion, oh, billion. okay. <laughs> That's beautiful. And then also last year, you know, the, the family that owned um, the Bruce Beach property in L.A. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that. Just those those types of things just lets me know, at least even though I'm not I wouldn't say I'm a Democrat. I am proud of what my state does. I really oh, yeah. am. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Where, where you staying now? Okay. What, what state you in now? Well, I'm I'm still in L.A. I mean, okay. you know, I'm taking care of the grandparents going back and forth but I, I also travel internationally no doubt no doubt my man i appreciate you kev thank you so much brother all right let's get um tafari tafari the god what's up tafari how you doing Tariq? i'm good man what's going on long time listener um about the tulsa thing do you think it's uh, like a prevention of the transfer of wealth to foundational Black Americans okay. that are descend that uh, will come after the descendants of the massacre in Tulsa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they look. They were. This was to send a message because see this that if they would have gave them their money, that would have set a precedent. That would have set a precedent so that opens the doors for all of these other towns that were destroyed by these white supremacists. We got to understand Tulsa. That was just one. That was just one, and it got the most press because of just how um, destructive it was when they were using planes. That was the first time that a bomb was dropped on American soil from the air was Black people, foundational Black Americans in Tulsa. That was the first time in history that bombs were dropped on this country. It was dropped on us by the damn white supremacists. You understand? Before Pearl Harbor. You understand? That was a, an act of war. That was a damn war crime. See, this is that's another thing. We're going to have to start looking at this thing and just speak on it as a race war. We're going to have to start using those terms. See, we got to you know, we got to tighten up. See, yeah, this thing it's uh, the decision even though it's a it's a horrible decision, you know, that puts a battery in our backs. We, we need to use this to put a battery in our own backs to say, OK, we're going to have to stand on business for real and wake up and understand how warfare is. We, ladies and gentlemen, are in a race war. We have to look at it like that. These are acts of warfare. These are war crimes that these people have committed against us and are committing against us. Did y'all see the video? There's another video of a brother that they took two years to release down in Atlanta, I think, right? Um, I can't think of the brother's name, but he was in a restaurant. The race soldiers pulled up on this brother and just executed him. Just executed this brother while he was in a restaurant. You understand? The video is circulating around. I, I wouldn't even post it. I'm not going to even post that video. But yeah, that's that's a race war, family. We're in a race war. You understand? You look at it from those terms. Yeah. And we got to get more bold about what we need. We got to get more bold about justice. We got to say, hey, we're not going to be out here participating in your system if you're not going to produce justice. And this is warfare. We got to look at it like that. There's a reason why they, they, the white supremacists are always sending their ops in our mix so that we don't get organized. Every time we start getting organized, we start trying to stand shoulder to shoulder and get on some some coded codification and some code business. We get all of these weirdos who pop up who are sent by the alphabet boys to try to disrupt anything we talk about. You understand? So that's what it is. We gotta understand what we're dealing with. That's the sign that's warfare. Let's get um Kiana. Let's get Kiana. Hop on, Kiana. You turn your microphone on, Kiana. 
Oh, Kiana? Uh-oh. Well, she said she's shy. She's shy as hell. Okay, she didn't. She must not have meant to get on. Okay. Get your shy ass out of here. Yo. Oh, who is that? Was that Kirk? What's up, Kirk? Yeah, what's up, Tariq, man? I'm good. What's going on with you, brother? I'm good. Just calling out of Chicago, man. Up in Chicago. Chill. Shout out to Chi-Town, man. Shout out to Chi-Town. You coming out to the, the, the rally this weekend? Yeah, I might uh, I might come and slide and see how it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, on the massacre um for the Tulsa thing, man, that's that's crazy, man. That shit crazy. I feel some type of way about that shit. Oh yeah, that shit's crazy, man. Yeah, man. But it is what it is, man. We gonna we gonna keep we gonna keep pushing. We can you know, we gonna yeah. keep pushing and and coming up with new strategies and alternative strategies, and we are gonna keep doing our thing. Um, Canali. Somebody named Canali. Canali, what's happening? Yo, Canali, you good, Canali? Let's turn your microphone on. All right, Canali. Canali's microphone ain't working. Let me give you one more try, Canali. Or Canal, whatever your name is. All right. Let's get um let's get Big Don in the building. Let's get Big Don in the building. What's going on, Tariq? St. Louis um, calling in. What's going on, brother? How are you? Doing good, man. I got three questions. I'm gonna try to be brief. I don't know if you want them back to back or just one at a time. But I was gonna start with the, of course the Tulsa thing. You know, I feel like these these lawyers are taking bad angles. And I, I'm wondering, like, why they take the angle they took. I know it feels like no matter what angle we take, they won't give us no justice. But it just don't feel like it feels like Johnny Cochran was brilliant and Dr. Co and Conyers was brilliant. But we it's like we don't have no more brilliant people. How you feel about that? Do you feel like we don't have no more brilliance in the yeah, in the legal yeah. game? Man, you know, and I, and I don't I don't want to shoot them down. I, me, I did think, well, they could have used a different strategy. I thought the same thing. But hey, um we we've never gotten reparations so you know people are just trying different things um yeah. again when, when johnny our good brother johnny cochran they he had a whole team of lawyers getting ready to go down there and throw down and right after they started getting everything organized he mysteriously got that damn brain aneurysm and died you understand so um, I really wanted to see the strategy they were going to use, and I'm going to look into that too. I got to, we got to go back and see what strategy that Johnny Cochran and their team were going to use, because I'm pretty sure he he crossed the the T's and dotted the I's, and they had a real good game plan. And I want to go back and see exactly what the program was as far as that, so we can hopefully revitalize it. But again, that's what we're doing, man. We, we're um, we're coming up with different strategies and we're just keeping the momentum going. You know, that's why we're coming out here to D.C. this Saturday to stand on that reparations business, man. Yeah, we're not letting nobody off the hook. Let's get um, Brozo. Brozo. Brozo, you there, brother? Okay. Now, hey, when I try to get people up here and they don't be saying nothing, hey, I'm messing the flow up. Let's get um, Moshi. Let's get Moshi in the building. Moshi, Mr. Moshi. What's going on, Tariq? I'm good, Mr. Moshi. How are you, sir? Hey, right here in D.C., man. Waiting on you. Waiting yes, on the rally. Man. Looking forward to it. Got some uh, young brothers coming down there to support. Oh, yeah. So definitely I mean, looking forward to it. Just um, I saw, you know, the ruling today had me down, had the family down to talk to my sons about it. Just let them know what happened. And uh, then I saw the story come out of Atlanta. I don't know if you guys saw the guy that was going to shoot up the uh, the rap concert. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we definitely in a race war, man. Yeah, man. And that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up, man. It was, it was a suspected white supremacist. Uh, was tooling up. He was going to shoot up a rap concert, but yeah, they they caught him. And look, they be they monitor these people, man. They they monitor these white supremacists. They know what these guys are about. They know their get down. These guys, they know where to find these dudes. That's another thing. 
they know all of these. These white supremacists be all on the same websites. They be on 4chan. <clears throat> they know. And they be sitting up here planning and plotting the stuff they going to do. They know these people, man. They, they're hip to them. And luckily, they got the guy before he, you know, went out and did what he did. I, I don't know which rap concert it was. You know, he might have was going to go to a, a concert thinking it's going to be a bunch of black people. But you got to understand, a lot of rap concerts have white people. So that's probably why they stopped him. You dig? Because this white, these white supremacists don't understand rap crowds. They think rap is synonymous with black. And um, they had to stop him. <clears throat> he's probably going to go to a Post Malone concert, not even knowing. So they're like, oh, no, he's about to go shoot up a bunch of white people. We got to stop his ass. He did. So, yeah, they, they stopped him. But we got to, you know, these people out here, man, these are, they're, they're out here planning and plotting. And um, speaking of that, there was a brother. I forgot what city it was in, but it was a white supremacist who was harassing this brother, his neighbor, just yelling a bunch of racial epithets at the brother and just kept harassing the brother. And the brother said, hey, man, and the neighbor was, you know, coming at him sideways and the brother shot and killed his white neighbor and they threw charges on this brother. Well, I don't agree with that because in New York, when the special needs black man was on the subway, just kind of yelling to himself, uh, Daniel Penny, that suspected white supremacist, snuck up from behind and choked the brother to death. And they reluctantly charged him. They didn't even want to charge him. Yeah. So, yeah, if a person is yelling, they're trying to justify, well, that person's a threat and they might need to be neutralized. Well, shit, that's what this brother did with the white supremacist yelling at him. He neutralized the threat, right? You see? We got to start using their language and in their logic. All right, let's get um, Waki Sabi. Wak Sabi. I think that's your name. Wak Sabi. All right. You, you good, Wak Sabi? Kanel, Kanali, you good? Yo, Kanali, you want to unmute your mic? You can. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, man. Okay. So um, I'm a big fan of yours. I just want to start by saying that. Um, yes. I do agree with a lot of the things you say. You know, I'm an yeah. immigrant. I'm from Africa myself. What part of Africa? With the, um, I was born in the Ivory Coast. Okay. But my parents are from Senegal, and I grew up a little bit in France. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so... <clears throat> I agree 100 percent with some of the things you say, and I I think Black Americans opened the door for immigration. Yes. Um. You know, I think after the civil rights, um, it was the backbone for immigration, basically, right? Because oh, yeah. back then, immigration was only like white people, and then right. after the civil rights, they fought for other people to come here, like Asian and African and all those people. So, I think immigrants should kind of like be a little bit thankful when it comes to that. You know, so I, I do agree with 100 percent. And I also think even the birthright was to safeguard the, the children of slaves so they can right. be American. So everybody that's born in America that are not from here, they're actually Americans and they have citizenship because of slave, because of uh, um, uh, African-American as well. Yep. So I do agree with that. And I think if I was in your shoes, I would be really upset if people come here and they disrespect African-American. I would be upset myself, right? Oh, yeah. Because you guys did a lot in Fort. And I do agree with that hundred percent. The only issue that I have with you, I think you should probably preach a little bit more unity, because someone like myself, I don't have any issue with African American. Like I understand the cause, I rock with whatever you, I think is hundred percent true, and I think you guys deserve reparation, and I don't. And I don't have a say so in American politics. I'm not American, and I completely understand. And there are a lot of people from Africa that share the same sentiment as me. We don't like we don't have any problem with you guys at all you know me yeah, my friend yeah. my cousin so there are people like us but i feel like i'm catching strays every time like you <laughs> you're talking shit about africa and i'm like damn like i understand your cause honestly like i completely get it and i think i'm here because of like civil rights that's why i'm here mm -hmm. so and and i do respect and i do understand your point of view as well it's just that i think maybe you should preach more unity because there are people like us like me that like i understand you know and I don't have any problem with that. And I don't think, 
I don't think I deserve reparation. I don't think I should even should have a say so when it comes to that, you know? Right, right. Yeah. I got you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll address that. Yeah, we the unity thing, we we unified with people who support us the way we support them. We haven't changed on that. Listen, let's be very clear. We didn't said it for the umpteenth time. I don't have any problem with any African people. I don't have problem with African people. I don't have problem with Caribbean people. I'm cool with Africans and Caribbeans. I have zero problem with them at all. Especially if you are a rider, if you down to support us the way we support you, ain't got no problem. For the rally for reparations, we got a lot of our FBA family. I got some of my African and Caribbean brothers who's actually helping behind the scenes. We're work they're working with this. My right hand man, Ola. Ola's Nigerian. My right hand man. If Ola needs a kidney, I give Ola a kidney this week. That brother gives anything on the planet for me if he needs it. That's a rider. My cameraman, another brother from West Africa, one of my camera guys, good guy, have phenomenal. This guy has high powered cameras that I like. Great guy, my dude audio. Great guy. You okay? Work with these brothers all the time. Have no problem with them. One of my barbers, my guy from New York, who travels around the country, is a superstar barber. My, my brother Jay, phenomenal. He's Jamaican. Good guy. He's got been in my house. My kids love him. So I work with brothers and sisters from the diaspora all the time. Who's cool? If you're cool and you respect us and our lineage, we have no problem. I have zero problem with you. But if you bring your ass over here and we're all types of Akatas and we're Jareers and Yanks and we start talking about reparations and your ass jumping up talking about we don't need no reparations and we're trying to fight for justice because a black person got shot and then your stupid ass hop up talking about what about black on black crime, nigga? Yeah, well, then we got a problem. Oh, I do have a problem with that. And we, we're not having no problems no more. We're checking tethers. The tether class, we're not tolerating that shit no more. This is getting to a life or death situation now. These tethers, man, are trying to wipe us the hell out. They'll get with the white supremacists because we've ignored tethers for a long time. The tether class, I'm not talking about the riders. Again, we're making a distinction from the um, non-FBA riders and the tethers. There's a damn difference. And these tethers, they... Let's keep it a buck. And some of y'all who call up say, oh, no, we, we need unity. Listen, y'all know y'all got them hateful ass... Um, anti-FBA tethers among you. You know that they lurk around because these are the same niggas that were over there in your homeland undermining you. They were the ones over there undermining your community to the point where they had to leave. They were the first ones to keep the shit in shambles and then run over here to us with that same janky-ass mindset. And we start to look around and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, family. A lot of weird stuff going on out here, man. We got to ask, who are these people? Where are they from? What's going on? How come every time we start talking about building something, all of a sudden we get these weird off-code people? Where are these Negroes from? We started just asking, where are these niggas from? And right there started opening up a Pandora's box. You see? Where this dope coming from? Where are these guns coming from? Who are these dudes actually shooting in the neighborhood? Where are they from? Who are these weird dudes running around New York stabbing people? Who are, who are melanated? Who we gotta we get the negative publicity from? We get the negative stigma from. We're starting to say, hey, no, 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 no. We ain't gonna be just one big nigga. Because see, when people wanna do this pan-African thing, they wanna do it so they can dump their garbage off on us. See, a lot of this pan-Africanism stuff is in bad faith. Yeah, they want us to sit up here and like, yeah, we all black, we all black. We're the only ones who are supposed to be doing that while in their homelands, they're tribal as hell. They ain't all black. These niggas be bopping each other over the head with, with uh, goat bones and shit. They don't look at themselves as the same. That's why shit is in shambles over there. They're always calling us, wanting us to uphold this one-sided pan-Africanism. Like we all one big global Negro. 
while they look at themselves as different when it's positive, but when it's negative, they can say, hey, look, we all Pan-African is we all black. So if we got a criminal in our ethnic group, well, he black, we all criminals. So we have to absorb their criminality. No, hell no. That's one of the reasons they hate that we delineate, because now they don't get to pick and choose when they can delineate. See, that's the thing, family. The the tethers, they're the first to damn delineate. When they get a win, when they get anything that looks like a win, they go out of their way to distance themselves from us. See, don't don't let them shame you at all of that. We need unity, my nigga. No, no, no. When when y'all win a goddamn award. If you go get a damn degree, boy, you make sure. And, uh, Uganda, this is, oh, oh, I'm not like those niggas. I am Ugandan. This is a win for Uganda. Stand up, nigga. Boy, you make sure you don't get lumped in with us. Boy, that win is going to get taken away from us. We don't get to enjoy none of your wins. We don't get to enjoy none of your wins, but all of your damn riffraffs, we got to be responsible for them. No more, nigga. No thank you. And that's the problem that they really have, family. That's really the problem that they have. Now that we have delineated, they can't dump trash on us no more. So now when we see all of these little janky crimes, the first thing we say, don't look like that nigga's FBA, huh? You see a lot of these crimes now that we are delineating harder and we're starting to look at last names and we're looking at foreheads and we're looking at flip-flop shoe sizes and we're like, hey, wait a minute. The nigga who just ran that scam, that's not one of us. Yeah, he he melanated, but he ain't one of us. Hey, somebody who just robbed that bank. Hold on, that nigga hairline started behind his ears. Where is he from? That's not one of us. So, yeah, we're not absorbing none of your stuff. We're letting you hold your own nuts. And that's horrible to them. You understand? We're not trying to infiltrate your circles. We don't even be in your spaces. We don't be in your conversations. We're not on your message boards. We're not going to your homelands trying to take over. All we're doing is saying, hey, you're going to have to be responsible for all of your riffraffs. We're not going to be responsible no more. You niggas hit us. You see? You niggas hit us. How do you niggas hit us so much? You, you see? They run around talking about we hate them. Nigga, you, you have nothing to hate. Y'all talk like how white folks talk about Caitlin Clark. Yo, the black women, you're jealous of Caitlyn. Caitlyn is running around here flopping and missing shots. There's nothing to be jealous of. You're saying that to big yourself up, to make yourself more important. Huh? Yo, Waxabi, are you ready? You want to unmute your microphone, Waxabi? <laughs> Yo, are you? That was yeah. my fault, man. My uh, my Bluetooth, my Bluetooth uh, died. Not the switch, my switch and uh, hit the button. That's my my apology. Are you in an amusement park right now? Funny, my fault too. Brother, what what music is that? Are you at an amusement? <laughs> Nah, my little girl is playing a game and shit. I just kicked up where she left off. <laughs> now, where you from, Walk? Where you from, bro? The little girl is playing a game. And I started playing it because it was understand. like it was fun and shit. Okay, I understand. Where are you from? Where are you from, bro? I'm from uh, <clears throat> when my family came out of Texas. But my family came out of Texas. I'm FBA. Oh, where I'm from? I'm from Buffalo, New York. Okay. Okay, brother, yeah, yeah, okay, brother. Y'all are looking at Coco Miller, and I can't sit up and listen to that shit. Damn, brother. And that baby need to be asleep. Why is that baby sitting up this time of night listening to Miss Rachel? All right. Y'all kids watch Miss Rachel? How many of y'all got kids? <laughs> How many of y'all know about Miss Rachel? <laughs> 
How many of y'all got kids that y'all know about Miss Rachel on YouTube? <laughs> Raise your hand if y'all know about Miss Rachel. That white woman be teaching her ass off. My kids love her ass. Oh, uh, we be watching Miss Rachel all day. <laughs> can you say mama? Mama, can you say mama's name? Yeah, my kids love that shit. This white woman be teaching her ass off. Um, let me see. <laughs> Let's see who we got. Uh, let's get um. What's your name? Dun Dun Dun. Uh, damn, I can't pronounce your name, sis. Danisha. Duntanisha. Duntania. <laughs> I do not have an S in my name. Duntania. Duntania. <laughs> Duntania. <laughs> who the hell named this no. damn? Who so, named Duntania? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me tell you. I was born in L.A., and I was raised in upstate New York in Rochester. So my brothers and sisters are way older than me. Everybody got regular names except for me. Lord. <laughs> so my mom said when she was in L.A., it was a girl named Olifia, and her name was Dantania in the middle for her middle name. But my dad wanted to name me Charlene. And my grandfather Dar wanted to know Darling. Henrietta. <laughs> Henrietta. What, what elderly people were raising you, dear? <laughs> How old is your dad? How old was your dad with him? Look, look, look I, I told you, I'm the oops baby. So my granddad, his name was John Henry. He wanted my name to be Lord. Henrietta. Lord. My father's name was Clyde. He wanted my name to be Charlene. <laughs> and my mama got so mad at my dad, she moved from L.A. to Rochester and named me Dantania. These these are some Mississippi folks. More part of, <laughs> no, where, my mom is originally from Montgomery, Alabama. Alabama. There you go. Okay. There you yeah, go. And my dad, uh, his folks is Texas, Florida, and Alabama. Oh yeah. Uh, there you go. Right next. Yeah, the, I heard those names when I was a child in Alabama. Those names, Lord, man. Now, how old are you now, dear? How old are you? I am forty three. Okay. You a good looking forty three. Where's your dude? Um, don't have one. Oh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Uh oh, oh Lord, what's wrong with you? What what's wrong, Duntania? Um, nothing is too much wrong with me. Um, I do have three kids. I have an eighteen year old. She attends LSU, and she's also okay. in the Air Force. Okay. I have a fifteen year old. Um, he's in high school, and then I have one like me, a new. Uh, 2020 baby. She's three. Boy, you got you had a whole a whole wide range there. Boy, that's I, I did, and you might be a little disappointed. I feel like I got put some voodoo on by a Haitian with that last baby. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Well, you, are you saying that that baby's hairline starts a little farther back? Hey, 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 hey. Leave my baby head alone. Leave my baby head alone, okay? Where's my bottle, nigga? <laughs> are you, are you... <laughs> leave my... You saw my, my cousins. Y'all leave my baby head alone. Oh, God. Are you yeah. still with are you well, so what happened with you and the Haitian brother? He, um, he, so he I I think it was I wasn't he okay, so when I started talking to him, he went really hard, you know, to get me. Like he was wow. I was like, Well, maybe this is it. Maybe I'm supposed to be with a you know, a Haitian guy. I wasn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. He had, you know, uh wanted kept urging to move me in. I was like, no. We ended up getting engaged. He had got me a car, moved me and my kids. And I was like, wow, like he is just. And then I think he thought I was supposed to be a maid at the house and stuff. And mm. that definitely is not going to work. Um, of course, after a while, you know, my FBA mouth came out. Uh oh, that was that. Oh, did, did he, so, did he yeah. jump on you? Did he jump on you before he left? Um, he can't can't jump. I would jump on him. Okay. Oh, yeah. So and but but you know you, go, I you better go get with him. Get Clyde and John Henry. In your, <laughs> his, his no, well now you know I, I have to be careful not date because he like to be in the bushes and stuff. Oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, throw you with those niggas. You know. <laughs> Don't have those niggas around he, my bed. But, but guess what? He was raised in Brooklyn, though. He was raised oh, in Brooklyn. 
So he done got real Americanized, I would say, a little bit. He still got them 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 ways. And after I started listening to y'all, I'm like, oh man. So ladies, listen, y'all, y'all watch out for them them foreigners. They be low-key real jealous of us and be wanting to lock us down. But anywho, man. you know. Man, I, I wish you couldn't come out here to DC to the, the event. I wish I could too. I have to work. I am living in Atlanta. I have to work. I got a lot going on. Um, if anybody wants to know my backstory, I will post my backstory and my books. I am an author as well. Oh, cool. I have a really, really deep testimony um, that I definitely want to encourage, especially our FBA sisters and certain things we went through growing up, which I feel like had a lot to do with a lot of our decisions. And so I'm teaching my children now about systematic racism and how that has dwindled down um, for generations or tried to, and it's up to us to stop it. I also wanted to make a point with the uh, guy when he said that Joloff Rice is not nasty. It is. It's nasty. <laughs> um, I used to go to this lady who used to braid my hair, this African lady. She used to cook all this stuff and her her house smelled like toe jam. Um, right. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even the was early, it had a little stench in it. I wasn't going, you know, I'm like, okay. Yeah, right. it, it smells like toe jam or something that's just like, I, I don't know. She did really great braids, but I couldn't wait to get out that lady house. Me and my cousins would go to her to get our hair braided. Um, also, you made a comment about Miss Rachel. I do watch her. Yeah. I do want to know why all of a sudden they have her being this... Um, L, what is it? The LGBT. Yeah, they got some stuff where they're talking about she's gonna be promoting some LGBT stuff, and that right there is kind of. Like, I mean, it's like, I, damn, like y'all just can't have nothing just for the kids. Why you got like I got kids? Ain't nobody did a march because I don't took some dick. You understand? Like I just right. don't understand no, it. Right. I don't get it. Right, yeah, man. It's so annoying, and even with my daughter, I have to watch her iPad. They had a download on their um, Disney Pride. I'm like, what the hell? This don't have nothing to do with Yeah, nothing. Disney, you know, when Disney had the Proud family on, and it was a bunch of LGBT stuff and boys kissing boys, I stopped really rocking with Disney+. Plus. I, I kind of chilled out. Oh, that. it's crazy. Even the iPad you get, you got to be careful because some of this stuff is pre-downloaded. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy out here. It's pre-downloaded. So, yeah, but I definitely appreciate what you are doing um enlightening us about this because for the longest we definitely thought our roots were in Africa and was kind of as time goes on you can tell that a lot of Caribbeans and Africans was taken over and we halfway was believing we didn't have any culture and then we had to step back and be like well wait a minute even in Jamaica, they used to listen to The Temptations and Mahalia Jackson and all of these things. So I really appreciate you coming out here with your ministry. I, I told you this before. You don't know it, but God has a calling on your life. And this is your ministry. And this is just the start. Yes, so ma'am. see you guys later. You guys have a good evening. Thank you, dear. And put some of that, um, your whole <laughs> your son's hairline to get it. Leave right. my baby alone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful sister, man. Beautiful, beautiful sister. Man, man. But um, yeah, man. You know, us appreciating our heritage and, and our lineage, that's very important. Just you know, me being a historian and just when people try to come around us, talk, because I, I was one of the people like, hey, we, we'll let's share our culture. Whatever we do, that's a win for all of us globally. I was on that. Hell yeah, I was on that. And I'm like, because we're not, we as foundational Black America, we're not insecure. We create stuff and hey, everybody can share. We can, we're very creative. We'll create some more stuff. We know how to create. We're not one trick ponies. We create new stuff all the time. Yeah. And just like with, with movies, like the, our documentaries, I had one of the tethers. You just make movies as a money grab. They're always projecting their little scammy one trick pony mindset on us because they they can only pick one scam and do those one licks 
they got to find one scam and do that scam and then project that on us. We don't know. We, we do good, legitimate business. We can do things over and over again because we're going to do it with integrity. Like I, I, every movie I've had has been number one, every single one, all of them. You understand? So we, we can be consistent and we can share and we've shared our culture to the point where people will take it and act like they did it. That's why we're starting to say, no, we're not going to let people disrespect us. And don't let people shame us for saying we're going to start gatekeeping our culture now. We're going to play this culture game. We're going to gatekeep our culture. And then we're going to start tallying up who really has the culture. And that's because of y'all over there, you guys who are non-FBA, y'all wanted to play this game. Let's be very clear. Y'all wanted to play that game. And that it didn't work out like you thought it was going to work out. See, y'all weren't saying nothing when Fat Joe and Buster Rhymes were saying all that weird shit. When people like Buster Rhymes coming out here talking about, yeah, they, y'all Americans ain't got no culture. You got hip hop from Jamaica. It was Jamaica y'all got that from. That came from Jamaica. Y'all got it from us. Y'all ain't got no culture. When y'all get that bold and start talking like that, and then none of the other people are checking you on it. Okay, we gonna check you on it. And unfortunately, when we catch, when we check them. So, Miss Heather, hop on, Heather. All right, all right, Miss Te- um, Heather. Oh, you all right over there, Heather? Something going on with her phone. I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, Let me remove her from here. All right. Okay. I don't know what that was. Okay. Sound like her vibrator was just going off in the background. I don't know what that was. All right. Let's get Billy Bell. Detroit in the building. Billy Bell. All right. Heather, you want to try it again? Heather, well, let's get Heather on. Heather wanted to, I don't know what's going on with her phone. Heather? Okay, Heather? Heather, yeah, yeah. Something is going on with your phone, ma'am. Uh, you might have. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you now, Heather. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Sorry. Oh, that's Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm good. How are you, Heather? I'm fine. Can you hear me okay now? Oh, yeah, I can hear you great. I can hear you great. Heather, what city are you in? I'm in, well, I'm in the suburb of Toronto. Oh, there you go. You're in Canada. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But just out of curiosity, what did it sound like before? What were you hearing? It was like um, kind of a uh, kind of a buzzing, weird buzzing sound. Oh, that's weird. I'm glad you took me back on because, yeah, Yeah. that that was definitely not intentional. I took my, my... I suck on tech. Just it's cool. It's cool. It's um, cool. So what's going on, Heather? Well, I just wanted to say hi because this has been really interesting. And I think I'm the only, like, by the way, I'm an idiot, okay? So I'm so, about to say something that could be idiotic, but no, I'm, I think no. I'm the only cracker. I'm glad that you're laughing. Cause it's okay. <laughs> you're you're our cracker, so you are a special cracker. So oh, it's all- yay! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So what's going on up there in Canada? Well, you know, I think there was another speaker, and they were saying it's boring. No, it ain't boring. It's ridiculous, is what it is. So yeah, it's. Now, what do you do up there in Canada? What do I do? Uh, you mean like just for, for a living? living? I mean, are you, do you work for the phone company? Or what do you do up there? Do I work for the phone company? I don't know. Just what do you do? <laughs> no, the phone company. That's funny. No, I don't work for the phone company. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I, uh, I work in finance. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But, cool. um, but I I think I just wanted to say that this has been fascinating listening to you guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're chopping it up. We're doing what we do. Well, we're just having a general conversation here. But thank you so much. Yeah, let me get some more folks on here. Thank you, dear. Um, let's get, um, let me see. Uh, we got a lot of people in here. A lot of people. How many people we got in here? Um, shit. We got almost 1200 people in here. 
We're in here very, very heavy. Let's get um kind reader. Kind reader in here. All right, kind reader. And then we'll get Reem. And then we'll get Kamal. A lot of folks in. All right, kind reader. Hey, Tariq. What's up, kind? How you? I'm good. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Now, where are you from, brother? Uh, I talked to you before. I'm uh, from a, I'm from Cali. I'm in Cali right now. Southern okay. Cali. Now, we talked before. I don't remember talking. Where yeah, talking? I was babbling a bit about Trump. I apologize. I went on a tangent. Uh, okay. You had uh, given me free way to talk about <laughs> politics. I wanted to discuss it further. I feel like I, I'm uh, passionate right now in the moment. I work in the education system. Okay. And um, I want you to speak on. Uh, I, I, we spoke on it before uh, how our power can be used by not voting and uh, how much of an impact it could be made that it is known that we do make a difference and we can choose not to vote. But um, I'm just really disgusted lately um, in these last four years uh by the white supremacy system that's in working and i really just feel like if we are able to vote i know there's foundational black americans that will vote uh what is something that is encouraging for us uh that do want to vote i know there is power in us not voting that is power by us choosing not to vote but if we do want to vote i mean what can what can you say to the community that do want to vote, that do want to make a difference and say, this is not okay. Um, what can we do? I mean, I feel like voting for anything else than what we're living under. I'm just, I'm really disgusted right now. Um, I feel like our community is really just being marginalized more so in these last few years. Me in particular, working in the education system, I feel like, uh, you know, it's affecting our youth. Our youth are being more marginalized. I feel I've had to go through things and experience things that I've experienced um, as someone who's grown up in the South in the education system and, and being discriminated against. I've had to witness things that I'm truly disgusted by <clears throat> working as a teacher in the education system. Now, how long have you been? How long have you been teaching? Um, just a little bit for a year. A year. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm trying to eat some lemon here while I'm talking. Um, now to your point, because boy, you, you I got to land your plane. You, you're a talker, boy. You, you were going on and on. But y'all better learn how to land those planes and get to the point. Um. We got to vote for tangibles, man. We got to vote for something in exchange for our vote. We got to vote for some damn tangibles. Um, we're going to have to make these people prioritize doing something for foundational black Americans. That's where it is. We, we, we can't do none of these little side deals and let's just wait it out. And well, the Green New Deal, that affects black people, too. No, we know. No, we're going to have to say this benign neglect nonsense that y'all have been on with us for the last 50 years, that ain't going to work. We have to stop going along with it. This is why we keep getting these injustices, because we're sitting here still going along with the damn program. Stop going along with the program. Say, hey, look, if y'all are going to sit up here and drop bombs on a community and the survivors are still alive and you're not going to produce justice, we don't need to be voting for none of you. We need to be here circling our wagons, getting on code based on our lineage. We start building things among ourselves because we can trust ourselves more than we can trust you. Now, they look at that as dangerous because, see, that's how you start nation building. When you delegitimize their system, the only natural recourse is for you to start building your own. Just instinctively, you'll do that. And they don't want that because we have the, the intellectual 
and the historic capacity to build. We're the only group that has been forced to rebuild over and over and over and over again. No other group has just repeatedly rebuilt their communities and their lives over and over again like Foundation of Black Americans. We've been forced to do that. Do you understand? We can get things popping even with obstacles thrown our way. and We can still get things popping. Other groups don't have these obstacles thrown their way. So that's why I don't want to hear about people bragging about well, the Asians did this and the Arabs did this. They don't need, you're not throwing obstacles in their way when they come here. There's no equivalent to a Tulsa, which y'all did with the Asians over here. The closest thing was when you were putting the Japanese in internment camps during World War II when they bombed the United States. And even then, you compensated them. You aggrieved them for like, what, a couple of years? And then wrote all of them some checks. You see? So there's no competition. There's no comparison. Kamal, hop on. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Kamal. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, um, I have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, the Tulsa massacre and the Rosewood massacre, just to name a few, um, would you be interested uh, by chance be able to do a uh, documentary on those two uh, massacres? No, because they've already done a movie on Rosewood and there's a bunch of documentaries on Tulsa. I think LeBron James or somebody produced one. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So there's already documentaries on that. Okay. I, like, I like to do stuff that's just not, that hasn't been touched on before. You know, yeah, I, I wouldn't do a documentary about the same thing. You know, if I do talk about a subject that's been talked about, I talk about it from a different angle. Just like slavery. Like, you know, we did a documentary about slavery a couple of documentaries about slavery, um, like Buck Breaking, that touched on slavery, but we talked about the sexual exploitation that went on during slavery. So we took it to a different angle. Um, in American Maroon, we talk about slavery, but we talk about what's not talked about is brothers and sisters getting the hell off them plantations and slaughtering them damn slave masses and how that was more common than a lot of people want to believe. So I like to talk about things from an angle that's not being touched on. Yeah. Reem. Let's get Reem in the building. Hey, what's going on, Tariq? What's up, Reem? How are you? Well, I'm pretty good, man. Good to catch one of these spaces. Super late out here on the East Coast, man. I'm out here in Georgia. Oh, yeah. And, uh, now I'm excited. Also, I got your microphone checked, Blu-ray in the mail. So I'm excited to check that out with my family, you know? Oh, yeah. That's love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wanted to uh, ask you a question, kind of been on my mind. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes I tune into, you know, a lot of different uh, conversations. And uh, for the most part, it was mentioned that Trump had this anti-whiteness bill, you know, kind of in, in the back pocket. And I wanted to know how you think we should prepare for something like that if they want to start coming after uh, folks who want to kind of speak against, you know, the establishment. Yeah. See, I've been, there's been rumors about them possibly having like an anti-white hate crime bill, you know, so that they might try to pull something like that. They might try to pull something like that. And if, you know, they pull something like that, um, you know, we can turn around and be like, OK, you guys already have white privilege and white supremacy. We can pull up all of the case studies to show that um, their Supreme Court statute stating that uh, this white White supremacy is the law of the land. Black man don't have rights that a white man is bound to respect. So, yeah, there's already been laws and benefits and privileges that protect whiteness. Yeah? So we have to flip that to say, OK, if you're going to do that, then you definitely got to um, get a hate crime bill and reparative justice for us, too, especially if they're going to try to give people compensation because you're not supposed to give race based compensation. And if they start giving stuff to people because they're white, let them open that door and we'll use that as a precedent to say, OK, since we're starting to make racially based quotas and racially based programs, which you said we're not supposed to do. OK, let's do it. Let's get these reparations then. Let's get it popping. 
but we can still fall back on lineage. So that's why when we talk about reparations, we always talk about it from a lineage standpoint, because when you start saying, okay, reparations for black people, they immediately strike, strike it down. They immediately use the um, um, constitution and everything else to strike that down because you're not supposed to um, have racially based um, preferential finances. But you can go around that. Again, stick to lineage base. That's where the term freedman and all that comes in. So we got to know how to work this thing and word things the right way at the right time. All right, we got to know how to juggle words and we got to use our words as weapons. All right. Let me see who's in here. We're in here deep. And by the way, people can still support the rally for reparations. We do still need people to hit the GoFundMe, ladies and gentlemen, since we have almost 12. Well, we got over 1,200 people in here. We still need people to hit the GoFundMe to help make this thing pop off um, this weekend here in Washington, D.C. Go to rally, the number four, reparations.com. Rally for reparations.com. Let's get Iron Mike. Iron Mike, this guy. He's over there in Asia with his Asian lady, and he has a... Iron Mike seems to have an issue with our lineage. Mike, Iron Mike, what, what do you have a problem with our lineage, brother? Oh, I don't, oh, man, come on, not even. I actually came up to um, talk about microphone check. Yes. I don't have a problem with the lineage. So I've been doing my research uh, trying to find scholarly academic pushback on microphone check. Yeah. And um, I got to keep a 100. And as you probably know, ain't nobody have any pushback. Like, nobody. Oh, oh you can't. It's right. zero. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, nobody. I, I was just thinking somebody from, you know, the hip-hop professors, but, you know, from the black professors. But um, other than a couple of these Latino cats that you already addressed, there's actually yeah. zero. It's all positive reviews. Yeah. And nobody has a critique. So, yeah, because you can't argue. You. You can't who you can't argue with the pioneers who were really, really there. Nobody was there before the people in microphone check. That's a fact. Nobody was there before them. So you, that that can't be argued. That's why you can't debunk it. You're gonna tell Chirac, the first female rapper, was she lying? Then find somebody before her. Who you're gonna tell Coke LaRock, the hip hop's first MC, he's lying. Find another one before him. You, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna tell Trixie. He's not telling the truth. Find another breakdancer before Trixie. You're going to tell um, Cornbread, he's lying. Find another graffiti artist before Cornbread. You can't. So you nobody can refute it. Yeah. Have you seen the movie yet? No, nah, brother. I'm waiting for the Chinese bootleg to come out. Yes, Until indeed. That happens, like, I, I can't get it. So. Yes, indeed. You know, but yeah, you yeah, take yeah. R&B? You take Chinese uh, uh, currency? Um, I don't, but I would like to get it out there. Though. I would like to get the movie out there. I'd like to have it play in Asia and places like um, China and Japan and places like that. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, would like to... you, I, I think, seriously, keep it, keep it 100. I think I've said this before. You you have to do an international tour for this film because yeah. the people will be very receptive. It, 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 it's it's important. And I know mm -hmm. in China, they'll, they'll actually love it. Like, they want to hear this knowledge. And, would um, we have to, would we have to get it translated over there? Um, it, they can translate it really quick and easy, actually. Yeah. Okay. okay. They got the AI. It's crazy. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can play stuff with AI real quickly now. Okay, uh, I'm going to look at the yeah, I, I, I think it would play big over there in, in some of those Asian countries who are real big fans of hip-hop. And, um, yeah, I think it would do real good over there. But I'm going to look into that, man. But thank you so much, man. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Nobody can debunk um, microphone jet. You know, you, you know, you know, you got the Derek Colones and people like that who be trolling, but nobody can really debunk. You're not going to debunk the pioneers. And y'all saw the film. It's a beautifully done film, man. Again, we we put our foot in that. Yeah, we did that, but we we went deep with the elements. We broke that shit down so heavy. Yeah, we we stopped all the lies. We stop all the lies, fam. All the um, Jamaican toasting. Uh, we didn't got the sound system and the sound class. Hey, man, please. Yeah, we did. We 
carefully debunked that stuff. We took our time and just meticulously debunked all of it with respect. We didn't we didn't dump on it. It, it was all respect. You know, it was all respect. Memo. Let's get memo. Memo, whatever your name is. Memo Craddy. I want to unmute your microphone, sir. All right. This guy doesn't have anything to say. All right, let's get um let me see who we are, who we got. Um I want to get some people we ain't had in before. Let's get um okay, who is this? I'm trying to get some new faces. Let's get um Twitter World. Let's get Twitter World in here. I want to get some people we ain't never got in and get some new faces. Twitter World, what's happening? Waiting on Twitter World's phone to do what it's supposed to do. All right. Let's get um, DR, DRS1. Let's get these microphones going, guys. So we ain't wasting time. I don't. I don't want dead air over here. Okay, what's going on with y'all phones, man? We got some janky connections over here. All right, let's do this. Let's get um, um Roland Martin's forehead. <laughs> let's get Roland Martin's forehead in the building. Let's turn the microphone on. All right. Good Lord. Right, let's get on. Okay. Hello, Tariq. There you go. Okay. You didn't say me, so that's why I didn't speak. Oh, Dr. Short. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that, that was your, your account, Dr. Short. How yeah. Well, that stands for Dr. Randy Short 1. Oh, okay. Got it. There you okay. go. I'm sorry. See, I don't speak out of turn, so I'll mute myself if you want someone no, else to go. You know, go ahead. You're here. We got you here. Okay. All right. Brother Tariq, everybody needs to know that thing they did to those old people, those elders in, in Tulsa, that's that's beyond monstrous. Yeah. Yes. That's beyond monstrous. We should be outraged. People should be calling for, uh, I know y'all don't agree, but they need to boycott the whole state of Oklahoma, tell people to not put any money in there. Break yeah, those I, crackers I, I, financially. They they need to be punished to treat our elder mothers like this. It's an act of war. Yes. And we're going to have to start recognizing that war has been declared on us. And I'm not asking folks to be violent or hurt anybody, but economically, we need to wage war on these people. A lot of folks, let me tell you, the day that these billionaires and folks start jumping out their penthouses and committing suicide is a day of black liberation. We have to stop investing our dollars and people who hate our guts. We need to be buying this some. Mm -mm. Oh, well, Dr. Short. Dr. Short. Uh -oh. He was speaking some hot fire. He, his thing got shut out. Uh oh, what happened? Hello, can you hear me? There you go. There you go. Oh, no. Well, I told you, I, you know, the Twitter people are pedophiles and I, um, I denounce pedophilia. So I've had problems on this platform. They have a lot of freaks running this stuff. Freaks wow. running the country. Freaks running that court that did that stuff to our mothers in that yeah. courthouse. We need to punish the whole state of Oklahoma. The day that some of these people lose all their stocks. The day that these people start doing family side oh. where they shoot up their families because we stop giving them our money, we stop rewarding people for hating our guts and wanting us all aborted or incarcerated or starved or homeless. The day that we get tired of subsidizing them, kill us, they're finished. The question is, when are we going to get tired of giving everything to people that hate us? When are we going to get tired of that? And so, brother, you're so on point. Everybody has to buy not just this film. Everything that this brother makes should be selling in the millions. 
You know what? I mean, if he were a white man, if he was, whether he was a conservative or supremacist, he'd be a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. And the people could say, oh, Tariq got this. Damn it, Tariq worked for it, bastard. Right. What's your problem? Uh, Tariq, I'm so sick of the haters. Uh, if yeah, we man. stopped hating for... Let's go. Uh oh, you keep going out, Dr. Shore. I, I'll get you back, Dr. Shore. Your thing is, your phone is going in and out. But I feel, Dr. Shore, yeah, they, they, when the haters, oh, Tariq, you know, Tariq is making this money. Well, Tariq works... 24 damn seven. Yeah, Tariq works very hard to put things together. Putting together films is not easy. Putting together large events like we're having this weekend is not easy. Shout out to the team. Shout out to Brother um, Afro Elite who's been helping us behind the scenes. Shout out to our sister Brooke who's been helping behind the scenes. Shout out to my sister Layla, who's helping behind the scenes. My brother Ola, helping behind the scenes. You know, we're working around the clock making this thing happen. You know, these things just don't happen. There's a team of people and we got to just, we're on the phone and calling venues and calling equipment stores and calling the porta potty people and calling the permit office. And it's a lot of damn work, family. And we're doing all this stuff for a free, it's a free event. So we're not making any money back. We're only getting donations and it's grassroots. When we, um, I did an interview with a reporter today where they're talking about how are we financing and Hey, this is from the grassroots. We're not, they were asking, are we working with a super PAC or we were, we're working with a political party. No, we're not working with no political party. We're not getting no money from anybody. We're not getting a dime from nobody. This whole thing, the rally that we got, the rally for reparations, Juneteenth celebration, no corporate sponsors, anything. It's the, the family. It's just you guys. We're just grassroots. And we're making it happen. We're getting it from the grassroots. So that's why I like for us to do things like this to show us, man, when these people try to play this little denial of justice game, we got to start getting into the mindset of us getting things done on our own. That's where we're going to get our power, circling our wagons and just building things and organizing things on our own without their intervention, in spite of their sabotage. Ric Flair, hop on, man. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? Great conversation. Uh, it's, it's definitely a tough conversation uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, what, what I will say is that, <clears throat> you know, what's happening right now when they've been denied justice uh, for the Tulsa massacre it's it's all it's all part of the agenda you know why because it's what what they do is they take hot topics and then they uh, they make sure that they get everybody's attention by doing the opposite of the right thing and then it, it sends us it sends the average average person in a frenzy and it's important for everybody to stay focused um, you know you know fight for what you believe in. Uh, but don't fight how they want you to fight because they want you to be wild, untamed, and they want you to be in an unmild manner so that way they can point you out. Um, that's that's their whole agenda with this whole thing is is to spread everybody more thin, create more narrative, uh, create more segregation, and point people out against each other. If you, I mean, if you haven't seen already what 2020, 2024 has been, uh, it, it's been – even more labels they cannot wait to label stuff and label people the more they label people within a uh, within their own society within their own race and and background then they can start to separate everybody more and more and more so you got to be careful uh to stepping into their agenda you got to outthink them don't go don't get too crazy but stay smart create a game plan and attack uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a, in a, you know, obviously I, I'm all about nonviolence, but like obviously in a, in, in a, in a smart way, um, and, and be smart, but don't, don't fall into the agenda that they're doing because this is, this is all, if you think they didn't plan this, if you think they didn't plan this outcome on purpose, if you think they don't have think tanks that know what's going on, you know, they, they definitely do. And this is all part of the agenda to continue to segregate people into a section uh, where they can start to control them. 
Uh, they don't care what race you are, what nationality, what kind of culture you come back from. They're trying to infiltrate and then break you up from your own people. So you got to be very careful with with um, with reacting to uh, what they're trying to do. And I like what Tyreek's doing, like he's doing his own thing and he's doing it, you know, um, you know, homegrown and creating something that can actually bring some substance. But going out there, rioting, breaking, that's what they want. That's what they, they can't wait for you to do that because they want to put you on the news. They want to interview you. They want to make sure they they want to give the dumbest person a platform that's angry, that's out of control, so they can say, "Look, see, see what we're talking about." So they can again push their agenda, um, and that's it's 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 a really sick uh, like kind of tactic. It's a very psychological tactic, and they're preying well, on the emotions of people. Well, I'm not. My thing is, I, I can't tell people how to react to an unjust system because you know. If people react how they react, um, however they see fit, because yeah, I, I'm not the kind of person who will say be violent or be nonviolent, because we never know what the circumstances are. I'm not a proponent of nonviolence at all, but I'm not saying to be violent, but I'm saying sometimes people are going to have to defend themselves. And if you are in a situation where people are, are declaring war on you, you don't have a nonviolent mindset because we're not just going to sit down and just be genocided. So we, we have to protect ourselves by all means. We have to defend ourselves by all means. And we have to let people know that we're not going to let them sit here and just pick us off like sitting ducks. Um, by the way, you have a Hispanic accent. What part of South America is your family from? Uh, I'm, I'm from I'm, I'm from originally from the Bronx. Uh, I'm Puerto Rican. Right. Uh, I, I grew up in the Bronx, one six thirty Sherman Avenue. Shout out to all my Bronx, my BX boys yeah. and girls out there. But uh, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, and um, uh, now now I live in a uh, South Carolina Myrtle Beach uh, in a Republican red state, uh, yeah. which I can tell the difference. Trust and believe, and I'm you know I don't get I don't get too into politics. I believe it's all a circus and it's all controlled to control a narrative, but. Things like this really piss me off because, man, I grew up in an African American community, Hispanic community, and then I then I moved to here in South Carolina, and you know they already have a perception, right? And they're waiting. They're what they want to is they want verification of that what they think that that people are. That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for people to verify who we who they think that we are, and uh, it's upsetting because it's a very silly mindset, uh, but. Unfortunately, you know, I think the, the, the larger picture is the government has brainwashed a lot of people that we just can't, we, you know, it's, I mean, we can to a certain degree, but there are certain parts of the group where, uh, in, in the United States, where they're looking to look at you in a certain way and categorize you, and they're just waiting for you to act like what the news told them that you act like. Now, let me get Ant CEO, because Ant's been giving thumbs down. Let's get Ant in here, because he don't, he... He doesn't like what he's hearing. Ant, are you here, brother? Yeah, Flex, I'm here, man. First of all, he was talking about these think tanks that want us to be. You, like you said, Tariq, we going we gonna to react and be however we be. That's not for you to negate, for you to even give an opinion on because you ain't us. So for you to bet, it's for, so for you to say how are we supposed to or not supposed to react based on what the public's view, we don't give a fuck about a public's view. What's good for us? We're going to react and respond however we need to respond. So all of that. And then, all right, you, you see right. the accent. And, 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 and respect. I just, I, I just, I didn't cut you off. My, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. I'm still talking. There you go. And then another, and then another aspect so I want to add to, you're, you said you grew up in an African-American community. I doubt it. You lived in the Bronx and grew up in the Bronx. Everybody in the Bronx, most of them, not FBA, most of them are Caribbean and African. So what African-American community did you grow up in? Or did you just grow up somebody that's melanin that looked like us, but not really us? You know, and 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 I and I appreciate that statement. You know, um, I wasn't trying to speak or speak for a bunch of people. So if I if I sounded like I was, I was not trying to do that. What I was trying to say is that I grew I grew up in an African American community, primarily Black community, Hispanic community, where the only time you saw somebody who was not your color or not your skin set is when you went to school and it was a teacher or it was a, maybe a law enforcement officer. So, I'm, but I'm also not. Well, here is, to, but well, I'm also not here to speak for everybody because, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not trying to speak for a large, a large population because that's not what I'm trying to do. 
I don't know. Again, I don't want to take over. I want to take over Tariq. But again, like you, you grew up in a community that you grew up in the Bronx, bro. Nothing against the Bronx. I know we got family out there, but like majority of the people in New York in general are not us. They just not respectfully. They got mixed lineages and they not fully us. So when y'all be saying that and you, you, you Hispanic, it's like you not really us and you ain't grew up around us for real. Respectfully. There you so, go. But I hear you, I guess. Thank you so much, Ann. There you go. All right, that's interesting. Let's get after we lead in the building. Tariq, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. What's going on, fam? Uh, uh, first off, I want to say to what you said about the space, I think this has been a really good space so far. And I'm glad you're holding it because yes. a lot of people are looking at the situation that I've seen on Twitter and they're looking at it from kind of like a see, we ain't ever going to get reparations type of energy. Right. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it because, you know, based off the laws of physics, with every action, there's a equal or greater reaction, right? With the thing with Trayvon Martin, there was a reaction that they didn't expect. The thing with George Floyd, there was a reaction that they didn't expect. They couldn't handle, and they had to concede. With this, with they're going, there's going to be a reaction that they're not going to be able to handle. I think that them not giving the reparations to the Tulsa survivors, I think that they did that out of desperation. I feel like they feel like if they do that, they're going to completely um, lose the lose the power. Yeah. I feel like it, it's it's very difficult to explain, and I'm trying to be brief. But the thing is, is that they're doing these last clinch things where they feel like they can't let anything go because they're slipping. Their power is slipping away from them, right. and what they don't understand is that we're not going to let this slide. They don't understand that there's going to be a greater reaction to this. So I don't want anybody to look at this situation and, and feel like all oh, hope is lost. I feel really? like, see, this is an example of we'll never get anything. I think that we should look at this situation as a morale boost, as a motivation to push us forward. Like this weekend with this uh, reparations rally, we should come in there with even more energy because of yes, this. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. My man, thank you so much, Brother Afro. Yeah, man, this should, this should put a battery in everybody's back even more. We got to go harder in the paint. You understand? And also now, I bet not see nobody running up on me talking about, hey, what about free Palestine and let's do this for Israel? That man, if you don't get the hell on, you better get far away from me with any of that. Y'all really better not try to get us to get on board with none of that. You understand? That's why I ain't been caping for none of these other folks, because when it comes time for justice for us, we get justice damn denied. So if we everybody's holding their own nuts, that's fine. That's fine. All right, you hold yours and I hold mine. We'll hold ours. All right. Well, we got speaking of agents here. What's up, agent? Agent Tubby, I, you always come around every time we do a rally. We see you pop around. So I see they got you on assignment, Agent Tubby. What's up, Black? Turn What's going on, brother? What's up? Awesome. So they they didn't they didn't give you your assignment. I knew. I you mean, were... man, you know, uh, it's fucked up what happened with the elders out there in Tulsa, isn't it? Uh, it's just it's just it's just a reminder of how white supremacists think about African American people, uh, and why we have to be serious when things like this happen. Uh, we can't we can't come in bullshit nah he, he, uh, like we normally do. No, this is a time to reflect about where are we at. Uh, what what is justice for African people uh, in America? That's that's something that we have to start thinking about. These folks live through that. This, this ain't something that is abstract to them. They have to study it. They experience that. And the Oklahoma Supreme Court said, uh, kiss, kiss our white ass. Uh, we don't give a fuck. Uh, mm -hmm. Take your black asses and die. Uh, that should make us all feel some type of anger. Uh, don't you agree, brother? Yes, I do agree. Yes, I do. So uh, now what, what steps uh, do you think we take? Because I was just reminded about the white woman uh, that, called, that called the police on the black brothers. You remember that? And she Which got one? fired. Uh, oh yeah, from the Starbucks, and she got twenty five million dollars. Right, right. 
She got so twenty five million dollars, brother. Right. So these folks can't get a red penny. Right. So that's why um, we're going to go to Washington D.C. this Saturday to stand on that business to strategize and signal boost the message to say, hey, look, that didn't stop us. That ruling that you did, that's not going to stop us. You think you're being slick. You think you're being fly. We're going to stand on this business even harder. The Democrats, you guys should be out the paint because all of those symbolisms and running around there dancing and shucking and jiving and you guys can't do anything to help produce justice. We are no longer supporting you. That's one of the messages that we should send or anybody or any one of these political groups. Um, if you're just going to sit here and play the symbolic gesture game, we're not going to support that. Well, we're going to come to D.C. and stand on this reparations business. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to stop and we're not going to back down. Um, the beat, the beat, what's your name? The beat, Nick. What's up, the beat, Nick? All right, the beat, Nick, one more time, man. One more time. Let's get it. Are you ready to talk? If not, let me get you out of here. Let's get um, Camazon, just the name Camazon in the building. What's up, Camazon? Um, let's try unmuting your microphone, ma'am. Hi. Hi, Camazon. Hi, Mr. Tariq. How are you? Good evening. I'm good, dear. Camazon, where are you calling from, dear? I'm calling from Florida. What's up? What part of Florida are you in? Um, I'm in South Florida. Okay. Um, no, are you, is your family from the Caribbean? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, they are, but we were, I'm, I was born here in America. I, that but what part of the Caribbean y'all from? Jamaica. Jamaica. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. When did y'all I, I have a question. Go yeah. ahead, dear. So I I really do like enjoy your space and I was listening. It was very entertaining because you're also really funny. Mm -hmm. But I always wonder like why why don't you like do you have any type of like dissent against pan Africanism and just unifying black people like globally? I always wondered, like, why you were just always so primarily focused on, like, just nationally versus, like, Africans and Black people from other countries. Um, well, because, well, I have tried to focus on uh, Black people globally. And the problem is, when you go to these people's homelands, they're split the hell up. They're so tribal, they're not even trying to be together within their own homeland. And what happens is they'll come here with that same tribal mindset and it undermines us. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, hey, we can't have people come among us. If you have a tribalistic mindset mm -hmm. where you're cutting everybody's throat in your homeland and y'all want to bring that over here to us, that's not going to work because you're going to turn us into a damn third world country over here. So mm -hmm. we, we're not allowing people to get us off code. We're supposed to be codified as far as certain things and the people who are the most on code are usually the people from our lineage because that's the commonality that we have. That's why in the 1960s, when it was primarily foundational black Americans out here, we could have a successful bus boycott and shut down the whole city because we all got on code. You understand? Yeah. I understand Mr. Tariq, but like, I mean, how do you know, if everyone, like all the black people right now that preside in this nation that are foundational blacks, because there's so many, you know, people who have came from different countries and they've intermingled and it's so much kind of like mixing. So how are you able to kind of decipher who's a foundational black here versus who has some type oh, of extension? Oh, we know, we know, just like y'all know, when we go over there to Jamaica, y'all know when we ain't Jamaican, y'all know when I go to Africa, they know I ain't African. They know, hey, hey, nigga, where are you from? And they know I'm, I'm not from there. <laughs> <laughs> just like they can tell I'm not from there. We can, this is the thing, y'all think we don't know. We, we, we know, we can look at y'all and tell 
some of y'all think you blend in more than you do. Some of y'all, you know, look, we y'all take some hats <laughs> off. We see the lines. We're like, wait a minute, nigga. <laughs> it's just you being super funny, but you yeah. entertain me though. I appreciate you. We we see some of that cake soap. Hold on, y'all walk around with the vibe cartel face. And okay, eight. okay. <laughs> How did you niggas know? Yeah, hey, we. Uh, yeah, nigga, I see you. I fucking see you. Yeah. So, now, you do OnlyFans? I'm looking at your page, and there's a whole heap of ass just all over your page. What do you got going? No, I don't. Why do you think I? Why can't I just be a free, a carefree person? How can oh. this? Why can't this just be my burner account? Like you trying to expose me? I'm not you know? trying to expose you. I'm not. Was that exposing <laughs> you? I didn't know I was exposing you, man. <laughs> no, no, oh. I don't do that. I don't do it though. Well, thank oh. you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, you 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 do the, you slapping your clappers together in, in a lot of your. <laughs> Wait, I'm doing what? <laughs> Slapping your clappers together. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, she is really throwing that ass in a circle all over the place. All right. You need to get an OnlyFans, make some money off that shit. All right. Let me get out of here, family. All right, man. Look, it's going down Saturday. This Saturday, family. Y'all need to be out here in Washington, D.C. We need to be standing on reparations business more than ever. Man, we need to be standing on it more than ever. We, hey, this has got a battery in my back. We're going to be out here stomping hard, ladies and gentlemen. We're going we gonna to get some justice. And we need to send a message to the country that we're standing on justice. We're not just going to take these little janky, unjust rulings laying down. Everybody needs to be out here in D.C., to say, hey, no, 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 no. Y'all not going to throw reparations out the window. No, reparations is going to be right here. We're going to still stand on that business. If you want us to move or you, you want us to support any of these things you got going on, you better get this reparations thing going. We're not going to falter from that. We need to stand stronger than ever. Kimmy, Kenny, I know you're going to be here, Kenny. Miss Kenny T, the lovely Kenny T. Miss Bronze Melanin. But anyway, let me get out of here, man. Go to microphonecheck.com to get the film microphone check. Also, go to rallyforreparations.com, the number four. All right, and support. Support the Rally for Reparations event because this is 100% grassroots, so we need you, family, to support. Anyway, man. Uh, cruising through in the black on black with my family. 